What's going on, FA Nation? John and Pemba here with James Grandi. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm NBA DFS podcast and live stream recording here for Tuesday's six game main slate. Uh, James, we are here uh, on a Tuesday with multiple teams on a back to back. We are still without key players on this slate. Kyrie Irving was traded uh, to uh, you know to Dallas, so he is not part of the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn here is on the back to back. We saw Cam Thomas. Last night, go off for 47 points. He's now had games of 44 and 47 points in back-to-back games. It's only he and LeBron James, apparently, the youngest two players, to score consecutive 40-plus point games in back-to-back games. His reply to that was, I would have been more excited if it was Kobe. I am a Kobe yeah. fan. So, uh, you know, despite being in the in the name, the oaks of greatness there uh, with LeBron, uh, still on this slate against Phoenix, uh, should be pretty interesting to see where his roster ship finds itself. You have LeBron James on this slate at home against the Thunder. The Thunder also are on a back-to-back here. You have Nikola Jokic at the top. Did not play the other day. Has this spot here against Minnesota. Um, so, again, for six games here, there's a lot of top guys. Uh, it'll be some pretty interesting roster builds. Yeah, and I think we should just start um, this pot off by saying, get it out of the way now. Uh, LeBron is 35 points away from the all-time record. Yep. Um, he has a game tonight, as we mentioned, versus OKC. But then he has Thursday night at home against Milwaukee. Um, both are TNT games. You know, Will played for the Milwaukee Bucks. So Kareem, it, right? Or Kareem, Kareem, sorry. Played for the Milwaukee Bucks. And the Lakers, yeah. like it's just a storybook type of thing. Um, tickets, John, are being sold for a hundred dollars tonight. They're being sold at a low ticket low is four hundred and nineteen dollars for Thursday. Yeah. Um, Vegas odds are all on Thursday night, um, breaking the record. But it is worth mentioning, like thirty five is in the bag for LeBron. This is a guy averaging thirty points per game. Um, so we could get a vintage LeBron performance tonight. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Jim, but... Jim Bowden asked me if I thought that LeBron James would intentionally fall shy of the 35 points Never. here tonight. And I said no. Never. He wants to win Never. basketball games. If it is a close competitive game and the Lakers need him to score to win, he will score to win. He, he's not going to withhold scoring to uh, crack it on Thursday, in my opinion. So. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> Like, it's a storybook if he breaks it on Thursday. And I'm sure, like, that would be cool. But, like, if he's feeling it, what, is he just not going to play the fourth quarter tonight? Or, if he like, it's just, he's going to break it. He's still nationally televised. It's still at home in L.A. Um, he might as well just go out and score 40 tonight and right. ruin everyone's everyone's bets. Um, but that is, I think, the storyline of the slate. Um, the other storyline, Devin Booker returning from injury. He's yep. going to be, be on a minute's limit. On the limit. Um, everyone from Denver is expected to play. Ben Simmons is expected to play tonight. Uh, I would say the biggest news we're waiting on is probably R.J. Barrett. If I had to just quickly look up and down the uh, injury report, I think R.J. Barrett's probably the one. Other than that, there's like not a lot of value, which we'll get into. But yeah, we know we what happens a- if Barrett's out. We've seen Randall and, Bar- and uh, Brunson have monster, yep, monster games without Barrett in the lineup. So. And quickly probably goes back into the starting lineup. Um, that game has a 225.5 total. Orlando getting 1.5 points at home. Brooklyn getting 6 in a 225 total against Phoenix. Um, let's see. The slate high is Lakers OKC 239. Uh, Lakers 6.5 point favorites there. Memphis a solid 233 or 235.5, um, giving the Bulls 8.5 points. The movement in New Orleans, Atlanta has been the biggest of the day. Uh, opened at 234 and a half. It's now 237. New Orleans, one point favorites at home. Uh, Minnesota, Denver, 233 and a half. Denver, nine point road or home favorites. I think Vegas got some people last night. We, you know, we, we broke down that Cleveland Washington point spread. And Nightmare. we're like, this doesn't make any sense. If, if Cleveland is going to be in this game fully healthy, no one's sitting. This should be like an eight-point spread and not a two-point right. spread, especially when Kuzma and Beal were already ruled out. 
Um, the spread eventually moved to three and a half after the starting lineup came out. Um, but, I mean, they won by 24 or something like that, right? Um, I don't know if you follow any of the betting streets out there, but there's a lot of these things called ladder challenges going around. Um, you know, basically you, you take a, a starting point and then you, you know, bet the winnings pretty much every single night. And after 10 bets, depending on what your wagers are, you can get up to X amount of money. Um, there was a guy that I was following, uh, that was doing his 10 days to $10,000. Uh, and he was nine for nine going into last night. He took the wizards plus three oh, for 10 grand. No. And I was like, oh boy, you know, that is... Because you're looking at that line, and you're like, Cleveland's got to be sitting everybody tonight, right? Like, you know, why else would it be? Why else would it be the two points? Uh, and in that case, I wouldn't have made that bet until the starting lineup came out. Right. Uh, but he locked Ugh. that ticket in before, and uh, that game was never close. So never. Tough. Never. Tough day to go uh, to lose the ten grand Ugh. challenge there. Um, but anyways, different story for a different day. We're looking at DFS. Let's jump into the point guard position. Uh, here, your top price guard is t- at ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Is Shigel just Alexander? Uh, he only had twenty six fantasy points last night. I was very hesitant to put him in the playbook yesterday. I did write him up, but I was pretty strong in the podcast and in the write up, being like I would prefer to play Dame. I didn't really like the price for for SGA because he needed to like really hit that ceiling. And now we got a hundred dollar price bump. I know it's a different slate. There are different options. I still just don't want to pay this number for for Gilgis Alexander here tonight. And I and I I'll take the opposite side again. I still don't have a problem with it. Um, the only I would say the biggest issue I think paying up tonight in general is the lack of value because most teams are at full strength. This feels to me after like an initial look like a fair and balanced type of build tonight. Um, But the Lakers are a very bad defensive team, even with Anthony Davis back. Uh, They play really fast, and I'm not going to hold up, hold it against Shea Gilch Alexander for one bad game because he's been tremendous all year. He's averaging 31, 5, and 6 with two steals essentially this year. Um, All rounded up, of course, uh, to make my argument better. But um, if you can find the value, I have no problem getting that Shea into that's again. That's fine. You again. You you look. You're looking at this slate. Um, to me, again, it's all about you know what, what does he need to get us to win a GPP at that price point. Um, you know, sixty fantasy points. Sure, he can he can do it. You know, five x at his price point. Those is going to be fifty five, fifty four fantasy points. Um, you listed what his averages are. That only comes out to about fifty fantasy points. So, uh, need a ceiling game out of him uh, for me really to get that six type x type upside um you know if it was a different slate maybe i consider it but when you have Jokic here against minnesota uh we we love you know we laugh at the history of him versus gobert and the stories that have been told before and we'll see if gobert is healthy or not for this matchup here but uh you know if i'm spending up i i, I know i know the joker for 800 dollars more could go for 90 you know uh and that's kind of where i sit spending up for sga here um, John Morant's at 10 3. Uh, similar to my sentiments, you know, if Desmond Bean was out, I think it would be a different story. I know against Portland and Indiana, he popped off for 72 and 63. He has a little bit more of a consistent ceiling, I think we've seen, but still, 10 3. You know, maybe you like the game environment here a little bit more against Chicago, but it's still not my favorite spot. Um, another guy I have no problem getting to if we can find value because again, there's not a lot of value as of this recording. It's going to be hard to spend up on the guys, um, but 34.8% usage, 1.6 fantasy points per minute this year without Steven Adams. Like mm-hmm. if he plays a full complement of minutes, that's been the best part about Ja lately. He's playing big minutes. Like we were worried about yeah. Ja earlier in the year where it's like, well, he's only playing 30, 31 minutes. And yes, that happened last game, but there was a blowout. Um, look at the games prior, 34, 42, 38, 35, 37, 34, 33. Like the minutes have been a key contributor to Jaws, um, production increase. And let's be honest, like no Steven Adams, the rebounds have skyrocketed. Yeah. So crazy, um, right? 10, 10, nine and eight, the last four games. So 
Um, listen, I, I agree. I feel a little bit better about Ja because I've seen feels like cons- more consistent high ceiling games from him than SGA, who's more expensive than he is. Um, and this game, I think, against Chicago is kind of an interesting one. Also, like Memphis being at home here, we'll get the Triple J a little bit later. Uh, <laughs> but he still hasn't missed the block steals prop at home yet since all that came out. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Trey Young at ninety four hundred dollars gets the Pelicans here. Brunson's at eighty five. McCollum is at eight K. Is kind of your next tier here, and Jamal Murray not to discount him at eighty two as well. Uh, I like Trey kind of in tournaments. I like that Atlanta New Orleans game quite a bit. I think uh, the best play of the slate is in this game um, as a little teaser and um, not okay. being Trey Young, but I do like Trey in tournaments. I, Jalen Brunson obviously pops if there's no R.J. Barrett. I don't think I'll play him at 85 with a healthy Barrett, but you could. Jamal Murray's been incredible. Yeah. Like, if you don't want to play – like, if if we don't find value and we can't get to Jokic, um, why not just play Jamal Murray, who's going under pri- he's right underpriced. Now. He's underpriced. He's underpriced. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 62, 54, 48. This is like – It's not even that. He's gone over 40 now in – one, kind of two, 11 three, games four, or so? Five, six, seven, eight. Seven of the last eight games, he's gone over 40 fantasy points. Right. So he's at a 5X or better, and then he's now given you ceiling games. Ceiling games, right? ceiling <laughs> games three in a row. Um, yeah, and, and it's a great it's a great matchup. So yeah. Um I mean dude, I, I think dude the stud. This is the this yeah. is playoff Jamal Murray from a few years ago. So. Yeah, bubble, yeah, bubble, yeah, bubble Murray for sure. This is the bubble version. Yep. I uh, like that call a lot. He's only going to continue to rise up the price points there. Again, I think CGM works in, in game stacks here. Um, you know, Ingram's back, so maybe we don't have the ceiling ceiling. The 11 shot attempts, you know, not great there against Sacramento. Uh, they that was, back. well. Uh, that's true. 23 minutes, 11 shot attempts. That's fine. Dude, he, that was a rant. Like, not only did he only play 23 minutes, it was like 11 in the first half yeah. for no reason. They were just like, you know what? have a good time and then he got in foul trouble and then they were up by a million and it was like yeah. all right dude right he's not taking 20 shot attempts anymore i guess no. is the, was the point i was trying to work my way around to uh trey murphy had like 30 actual in that yeah game. Okay. yeah it was a, yeah i mean there was no ingram and you would like cj was like no it was no valentunas no ingram and you're yeah. like holy cow this is the best play ever and then he just doesn't play minutes and you're <laughs> like, oh okay that's cool. yeah hernan goat did though <laughs> he sure did he sure did <laughs> um mid-tier guys here uh cb3 with booker back and he uh down uh, like he there's not like a drop off per se but like can what is the expectation for offense i know booker's gonna be limited but better than over seven probably <laughs> better, better than, that's probably correct we yeah, can only it's hope it's over bad. seven against detroit yeah, gross. yeah that's brutal that's a brutal beat. Uh, DeAndre Russell's at 74. We keep saying it. Like, just you can just play him right now. I mean, mm-hmm. sure, Sacramento game, 40 minutes, 25 fantasy points, kind of a letdown. But everything around that's been fantastic. So, yep. um, really good uh, price point for him there. And then you mentioned we get into this 5K range. I'm just going to skip Westbrook. I, don't, I think he's too pricey. Yeah, that's now. fine. That's fine. Um, you know, Fultz is 58. Quickly is 54. Cam Thomas, point guard eligible, still at 52. Um, you know, Sumner's at 41. A little price dump on price drop on Sumner drop. here. Big drop. Yep. Um, you know, gonna gonna be in a spot there for him. Uh who who sits for Ben? Is it it's it can't be Cam Johnson, it can't uh Cam Thompson rather. Thomas. Cam Thomas, Thomas at Omar, this point. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's too many Camerons and Cams in my in my brain. <laughs> um, can't be Cam Thomas at this point. You guys, that guy's not sitting for anybody. Um, is it Royce O'Neal? Like, do they move him back to point guard Ben Simmons I, and Sumner sits? Like, what, how how do you think they handle this now? Well, also, is we don't know the statuses of uh, Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith. True. So True. they're not even on the slate. There's also rumors that Brooklyn is trying to flip Dinwiddie. So will they even play Dinwiddie? Like, I don't yeah. know what the the plan is going to be. Like, let's let's play out hypotheticals. Let's say they don't play. My assumption is Claxton for sure. Sumner, I would say 
think he starts at point guard. Thomas has to keep playing. Thomas has to start if he's playing this well. Simmons, O'Neal. That would be my guess. Because yeah, Joe, Joe Harris, Harris, goes, Joe is, Harris, goes to the Joe Harris has no, like, he has not been good, yeah. really. Um, so my assumption would be Harris to the bench. Obviously, everything is in question if, like, Finney Smith is playing tonight. Because Finney Smith is going to start. There's sure. no question he's starting. At that point, I would think Ben Simmons might even come off the bench. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's. He's probably going to be limited too when he's come back from these these knee things. Yeah. Like he plays twenty minutes. So what do you what do you think? If you had to guess, like what do you think Cam Thomas ownership is going? In? If he's if he's starting, 50%. we get the lineup. Fifty percent. He was thirty five percent last night. Yeah. I think fifty percent tonight because he's not going to come off the floor, and no matter what happens, blowout he plays. Yeah. Either way, he's on the floor. So and and if you're, I mean, he scored forty four. And we, this is why sometimes we talk about like matchups not meaning anything. Kawhi and Paul George were on the other side yeah. of the floor, and he scored forty. Yeah. He'll get he'll get a points. lot of bridges probably tonight, but I mean, you know, or he's still going to be, uh, you know, it's still going to be his spot. So, so from what I'm seeing, uh, 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 he is currently the second highest projected on play of the slate. Mm-hmm. And I teased who I think the best play of the slate is. Without looking at the ownership, and he's also he's number one. So I, okay. I'll, I'll uh, we'll get there soon. But I I think of the tier, it's clearly Cam Thomas of this tier. And then you're right. If Sumner's starting, dude, forty one hundred. Yeah. How do you not just lock that in too? Yep, I agree. Uh, they don't play Bones Island anymore. They're just gonna trade him. Zero yeah, minutes the other yeah, day when everybody was out. So can't can't trust that. Okay. Uh, we liked Jalen Suggs the other day. But he only played 15 minutes. He still gave you 24 fans. He got eject. He got ejected. Okay. Oh, right, right. That was that game. Right, right, right. Okay. And then Mo Bamba off the bench just started yeah. a fight. With yeah, Austin started Rivers. fighting people. <laughs> um. All right. So I go back to Jalen Suggs then. I forgot he got yep. ejected in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thirty six hundred dollars yep. on a slate where there's no value that we're looking at. I'll, yeah. I'll, let, I'll play some Jalen Suggs tonight. Let's look at. I'm gonna look at Popcorn Machine real quick sure. and see how many minutes. Like he potentially lost um, out on, right? Um, Orlando, Minnesota. So he did he miss a game already? Because he was suspended for one game. Did yeah he su- yeah he missed a game. Okay. Um, that was the game they started. Um, actually, yeah, I think I think he missed a game. Have they played so, since Saturday? Have they played since Friday, or Orlando? Yeah, I think that was the Paolo Bencaro chalk game where he let everyone down. They have, yeah, the fifth. They played on the fifth. Uh, Fultz had 30 fantasy points in that game. So, um, Yeah, so Suggs played <clears throat> only a two-minute shift in the second half before he got there. Yeah, so great. 16 minutes in the first so half. He played 14, 14, yeah. 14 minutes in the first half. So if he's playing 14, he's taking Cole Anthony's role essentially yeah. right now. So... I'm with you. It we do not have value. Like yep. there's not. RJ Barrett would open that up. Um and, and obviously we know there's potentially other people getting ruled out, like Gobert or whatever, but um Yeah. yeah I think Jalen yeah. Suggs is the value we're looking at here tonight. Yeah, probably. Um all right, let's go to shooting guard unless you have somebody else. Nope, this is uh, shooting guard is we go. Okay. Uh Anthony Edwards is up to ten K. Yeah, not paying that price. <laughs> Can't do Booker on the limitation. Dejounte at ninety two. No, Zach. Levine. I mean, like tournament tournaments, but like it's the, we're basing that price off his last game. That I mean, was yeah, sixty seven, forty two, thirty six, fifty five. Last four for him. Uh, you got Zach Levine at eighty three hundred dollars. Uh, again, only twenty four and three against San Antonio the other night. Well, well, that's well, that's because Andre yeah. Drummond had the game of his life last night. Yeah, well, dude, him. Andre Drummond and Nikola Vucevic combined for 100 fantasy points. I mean, we talked game. about the, the, how good that matchup was for centers. Uh, 100 fantasy points between Vuce and Drummond. Yeah. <laughs> I was kicking myself because, again, his assist prob Vucevic was three and a half. Um, he keeps going over. So, he did it in, in 24 minutes last night. Yeah. That was how much he played. Yep. Yep. He would have killed, killed it again. I, I would imagine his assist prob is over three and a half tonight. Yeah, probably. Uh, um, but because he's just been hitting it too consistently. The Bulls are all the same. They're all like, pick your pick your one of the three, yep. and good luck out there. Yep. Uh, Twenty nine minutes for Giddy last night because of the blowout. Had still had thirty seven fantasy points, so we know mm-hmm. he can he can yep. pop. 
Uh, Desmond Bain did pop against Toronto. Uh, 10 of 17 yep. shooting, 45 fantasy points. He's at $7,600 there. You got Brandon Ingram. Probably best play the slate. He's the best play the slate. Best play the slate. Yeah. I mean, we were best. all in on him against the Lakers. And Dallas, <laughs> best play the slate. And why is he 7,100, John? Why did look he at, go from 76 to 71 to 69? You know, like, he's the best. He's the first player out we should lock into our lineup. I'll just fine, I'll hit the button. I have no Not even. I mean, no problem. The minutes, the, button. the minutes are there. I'm gonna put Jalen Suggs in there as well because I think those are two guys we're playing. So yeah, that's yeah, that's fine because we need value. Yeah, um, Suggs and Ingram in the lineup, locked in. It, dude, the minutes are there. The shots are there. The everything is that like he is a nine K player. There's no Zion. There's no Zion. What are we doing? What are I think we doing? the biggest question is going to be. Do you play Anthony Davis or do you play Nikola Jokic today? Because Anthony Davis went for seventy fantasy yeah, points. Really he's cute. at ten five, right? So like, yeah, I know. Uh, we'll we'll figure out what happens when we get the center today. Uh, but I'm with you there. Ingram at seventy one's great. Uh, yeah, Franz, Royce O'Neal, Bogdan, Bogdan. Don't love a lot of this. I think I think Cam Thomas is a guy you probably have to lock in as your other guard here probably. today. Probably, uh, yeah. Just for own, pure ownership. Standpoint. Here's a here's another situation where last night I wish some of the guards were forwards. Right. <laughs> Same thing again tonight. It's like Cam Thomas is a small forward on Fanduel. I think. I think he's shooting guard small forward. Branham well, is would, a small forward only on Fanduel. That would be really nice if we had that eligibility <laughs> in DraftKings <laughs> because we're locking. We've locked four guys and they're all guards. Two of the two on the same team: Ingram guard, Suggs guard. Like. Yeah. Who are the two on the same team we locked in? Well, potentially locking in, depending on how Brooklyn's starting lineup falls, oh, yeah. like Sumner, Cam sure. Thomas, like just sure. both too cheap. Um, other guys here in this mid tier range again, quickly is at fifty four. We would probably play him if there's no Brunts or no no Barrett rather. Yep, probably. Um, Anthony's at five K, but we talked about it. We like we like Suggs here more. Um, for sure. It's given the price points. I mean, I don't know. Is there a value down here that you even consider at this point? Yeah, I would consider Quentin Grimes if Barrett's out. Okay. Just um, he's been okay. Like Gary Harris know the, is getting the minutes, but he kind of sucks. Yeah, he yeah, it's not the same Gary Harris as he was in Denver. I th- I think Grimes like is Gary Harris on steroids almost. Sure. Like he's gonna play forty minutes and at least give you somewhat of a floor at forty eight hundred. Um, I don't love the price point, but. He has been decent. Jalen Noel had a really good game, but that wasn't a blowout. Can we trust that again? I don't think so. But like Denver also could blow him out if there's no Rudy Gobert. Right. Or with Rudy Gobert could blow him out. So um that's probably it. And then, you know, what do the Knicks do if Barrett's out? I mean, they played McBride a lot. They played Fournier a lot last game. Who yeah, I saw that Fournier got eligible. random minutes all like out of nowhere. But that was with that was because they scratched Barrett like yeah um, after, after lock. lock yeah, yeah after, after lock. lock so like and he fouled if, out of that game too which is funny yeah so like you know there are there are there is potential value for the Knicks I think quickly is clear cut the best of the bunch but like Grimes would be in play McBride would be in play and Fournier would all be in play if Barrett didn't yep. All right, small fo- small forward we have LeBron at eleven two ooh small forward only now yep. that's the Rui. That's the Lu- Rui Anthony Davis effect right there. Yeah, yeah. So LeBron James, small forward only at 11-2. Uh, DDR still at $8,800. Again, uh, not a great game for him last night, but you mentioned all the centers did all the work. Uh, 8800 against Memphis here. Uh, Boncaro at $7,500. Again, I do I do kind of like yeah, it's a good price. this price for him. Now, he's been cheaper lately, but he was also too cheap when he was under 7 k he was probably He's just not ex- making shots, dude. Yeah, he Look was at it. too oh. expensive when he was in the 8K range, yeah. so 75 is a good... The rebounds are great. The assists are good. One steal in every game now for, like, eight straight games. Um, make some shots, dude. The just shot make some shots. Just make some shots. Make some shots. So, I like... I don't mind 75 taking a shot on him there. Um, but, again, after that, like, I don't know. I mean, Troy Murphy, maybe 53 again, but you said everybody was out for that game. Yep. Um, you know, he was okay uh, with everybody healthy. You have Jalen Williams. You know, we only really like playing Bruce Brown when guys are out of the lineup here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cam Jay has got to deal with, with Booker being back. I mean, I don't know. Is there a small forward? 
that you're looking at, you're like, yeah, this is the one, this is the play? I don't think so. I think you're pretty much right. Like, maybe it might just come down to, like, who you think is going to be on the floor. Like, DeAndre Hunter, someone that you talk about a lot, is going to play 30-plus minutes. Yeah. Honestly, scores, that's, honestly, it's probably DeAndre Hunter. It's, it's probably DeAndre Hunter. I think it's really hard to project Cameron Johnson right now because – they Monty Williams pretty much came out and said like they rushed him back when he originally came back they ramped up his minutes too fast but then he also said they need if he doesn't play enough he's rusty so like what do you need him to do do you need him to play more or do you need him to play less because both those things you said don't correlate with one another so yeah um it's really hard to trust that Healthy Pelicans team, like you can play Herb Jones, but you know he could be a zero offensively. Yanni Hunter has been really has actually been really good. If you want to just look at his his current price compared to recent production, you have you know a rounding of course, but you know six x uh, last game against Denver, forty fantasy points against Utah is an eight x return at at fifty two pretty much. You had five x against Phoenix. He had a bad game against Portland. They are only fifteen fantasy points. But then a 6X, a 7X, a 6X, like, he's mispriced at $5,200. And I was, I mean, I was screaming this three years ago about DeAndre Hunter, it feels like, two years ago before the injury. So, um, and I know we always go back and forth because you're like, where is he on the shooting totem pole right now? It's right. definitely behind Young and definitely behind DeJounte. But, like, is he a, is he ahead of John Collins now? Yeah, or, John Collins is just... Right? Like, so, I think DeAndre Hunter at 52 on this slate specifically, is probably a, a core play. Yeah, I mean, slate specific, I like him here. Um, you can also, it doesn't hurt that he's multi-position eligible too. Yeah. Like, you can use him at small forward or power forward. That gives you four different spots you can use him at, especially on a slate with not a lot. I will say, like, the Denver game, there was no Trey Young. So, that, take that with a little grain sure. of salt. But he was great in the Utah game. Um, with the starters, so, like... Hunter, Young, Capella, Murray, Collins. Um, he has a significantly higher usage rate than both Collins and Capella, which I think doesn't really shock us. Um, 19%, it's only slightly behind DeJounte, 0.8 fantasy points a minute. So, like, not elite, but, like, if you get 25 fantasy points from Hunter, which he's giving you, I mean, six of the last seven games, yeah. right? One game excluded there. Portland, he shot 3 of 14. And that was actually without Trey Young because I mm-hmm. played him that night at like 1%. Um, it's been very consistent. Yeah. So, um, barring like a late scratch somewhere. Or... And I mean, the, the Phoenix game, right? They lost by 32. He had 25 fantasy points in 25 minutes. Right. right. So He's on the floor. He's going to be productive. Um, and there's not a lot to like. Like if Kyle Anderson sits, I think – that opens up value too. Like yeah, who Torian gets Prince. who brought those minutes there? Matt Ryan. Started they started. The yeah, they started Matt Ryan, but I Torian Prince played a bunch of minutes. Twenty six so minutes. Yeah, I think Torian Prince and McDaniel's would be both like, but like is McDan- This doesn't feel like a spot McDaniel stays out of foul trouble. Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, yeah, Jokic attacking the rim. Like, is he going to stay out of foul trouble? Do they put him on Murray? You know, because they've done that at times. So. I would, I would definitely have some interest in Torian Prince. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've gotten a minutes bump on Jonathan Isaac. He played 11 minutes the other day. Hell yeah. Maybe we'll get uh, 13. He Six, is out there. 16 fantasy points in 11 minutes. 14 fantasy points in 10 minutes. Unleash. Unleash our boy. I feel, like, I feel like when we come back from the All-Star break, we're going to get like Somebody gets moved 20. from Orlando on Thursday, right? Has to. Has they just have too many. Too, they many have, forward, too many forwards. They have too many rotational pieces. Bull, like Bull's they, probably going to get moved first to somewhere, right? Like he gets traded all the time. They just have too many guys. They have too many RJ guys. Hampton seems like he could be traded. Right. Suggs. I mean, there's. I feel like there's a lot of... Gary Harris could be a good rotation piece for somebody out there. Yeah. Um, there's too many. They have they drafted too well, I guess. Maybe I don't know. Like they have. Well, they traded for Suggs. Yeah. Um, they traded for Bull Bull. Right. They traded no, they, they for traded Gary for Harris. Hampton, but they, well, they got RJ Hampton and Gary Harris in the Aaron Gordon trade. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, they got Wendell Carter for Vucevic. They drafted Cole Anthony. They they got Fultz in a trade. Yeah. They traded for Wendell Carter. So they've drafted the last two years, Boncaro, Franz. They drafted... Um, they drafted Suggs, but... 
They, the drafted, year, they Suggs. drafted Suggs the year after they drafted Cole Anthony. So it's like they're just stacking. Uh, and Mo Bamba, they drafted who is about who didn't pan out for the, what they hoped for. All right. Um, all right. Uh, so other small forwards are done here. Um, you know, Lonnie Walker's back, but not playing enough minutes to matter. No, and Austin Reeves is coming back tonight. So Austin Reeves is coming back. That rotation is going to be a nightmare. Uh, what did Matt Ryan play for minutes there? Anything like good? Like 15. Yeah, it was 15, like 15 yeah. minutes. And I think, I mean. Uh, if, if he starts, would you play Matt Ryan at 3K? <sighs> probably not. Okay. I don't know. I, I'd probably still Torian. feel like they would give Torian Prince more did he get, run. Did Jalen Noel benefit from Kyle Anderson being out? Did they shift up in Edwards? He blew, I mean, he, that's the hard thing. It was a blowout. So, like, sure. what was the actual... Let's look at what the actual minutes were. When was that Minnesota game? Uh, um, fifth. The fifth. Okay. Um, game flow. Because there was that, a run there where Kyle Anderson was hurt. Yeah, Kyle Anderson. Um, true. So he didn't play after the six-minute mark in the second quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt Ryan played... 10 minutes in the third quarter and then didn't check in until the final four minutes when it was a blowout. Okay. So we saw Torian Prince check in for Matt Ryan. And then, well, I guess he tech technically checked in for, um, who, checked in, who checked in for Kyle Anderson when he left that game? Uh, who checked in for Kyle Anderson? Anthony Edwards. <laughs> was Jalen Noel already on the floor? Uh, Jalen Noel. I'm basically trying to see did they was play, on the floor. Did they play a Russell Noel Edwards lineup? Is what I'm looking for. Jalen Noel played the final 15 minutes of the game, so he yeah. got blowout run. Okay. Um, Torian Prince checked in right after Kyle Anderson got hurt, like a minute after. Yeah. And he played four minutes, the final four minutes of third. He played 12 minutes in the second half. Could have been 16 if that game was competitive. He sure. checked out at the four-minute mark. So okay. it still feels like Torian Prince. Um, and it feels like Noel got blowout run. Because you also factor in Jordan McLaughlin was back last game. Oh, too. true, it, true, true. Didn't okay. play a lot. Didn't play a lot. Um, but it is worth mentioning. If you think this game blows out, Jalen Noel, we know, is a tournament dart. But, yeah. like, hard to predict a blowout, hard to I would say. Blowout. I agree with you. All right, power forward then. Um, Randall's at 10-2. I, I like it. I I'm, yeah. I mean, I definitely like it. And if Barrett's out, I mean, mm-hmm. we've seen, we saw Randall know Barrett 70, 60 fantasy point yeah. games. So, um, you know, you're looking at this slate here today where, you know, we, we talk about paying up for, for, for Joker, uh, but AD gave you almost 70 and he's under, he's under 11 K and a Barrett, no Randall, uh, no, no, Ran, no Barrett Randall performance, you know, was giving us 60, 70, fantasy points there so um i'm kind of i'm kind of interested here in julius randall if barrett plays do you have any interest in randall at 10-2 yeah i mean i think he's a tournament play okay. uh, with barrett we know he has a ceiling um especially when the when the three balls falling early like it's going to be a big game for julius randall i feel like he is like the best first quarter producer or at least when you know when he's going good he's producing the first quarter you're like holy cow yeah i'm gonna win all the money um it's hard to ignore the numbers without Barrett and Mitchell Robinson this year. Thirty-two percent usage, team leading one point four fantasy points. Yeah, he's a mo- so. he was a mo- he's been an absolute monster. So, uh, if Barrett sits against Orlando, I think Randall's going to be a, a pretty popular. I, I don't know. If, I don't. Yeah, it, it's interesting because where how are you getting to Jokic and how are you getting? Oh, that's, to the so that's where now? I'm kind of wondering. Like, do you you think fair and balance is the way to go today? You know, you're looking for the the ceiling, right? So, like we mm-hmm. did last night with Jason Tatum, a little bit, where it's like, okay, these guys are out. Tatum can give you what Giannis can give you, right? In, in a sense, right? Giannis, of course, can go for ninety. Tatum, we've <laughs> seen go for seventy. But last night, that pivot down worked, right? right? They scored the Correct. same. Um, you know, Joker can go for seventy, sure. But we've seen Randall go for sixty. Right. We've seen Andy Agreed. Davis go for seventy. So that to me, that's that's a spot where you're looking at no Barrett and the production we got out of Randall, and you're like, all right, I can save fourteen hundred dollars on a slate where it's not that great and play Randall comfortably. 
um, or jam in, you know, Joker and, and fi figure out where to go from there. So um, maybe you're right. Maybe it'll be contrarian. Tatum was what twenty five percent last night, I think, or something. Yeah, like that. he was a little higher owned in the in the forty dollar single entry, but yeah, around that price point. Yeah. Um, so again, Randall ten two, I do like it a lot. Uh, Jaron Jackson at home, we've talked about. It. He's averaging eight more fantasy points per game at home. Uh, <laughs> there's there's the whole blocks and steals, uh, Reddit thread, which you know the NBA debunked supposedly, being like there's you know a bunch of people that look at this and blah blah blah. Sure, we know that he's an elite shot blocker, but also he's averaging double the amount of blocks no, and yeah, steals crazy. at it's... home. Then he is away. Maybe he likes sleeping in his own bed. I don't know. <laughs> um, you worry about fouls here, though, you know, yeah. against Vucevic. And, you know, Pat Williams isn't going to get him in foul trouble, but, you know, Vuk could, could blunder him a little bit. So, um, but a great spot. You, you would like him better probably with no Bane. The, the rebounds have been great. The blocks have been great. He's missing all of his threes. If those ever yeah. hit, he could, he could give you a 50-point game like he did against the Pacers maybe. But, yep. Um, yep. anyway, 7,300 tournament play. Uh, we don't mind that one there. Uh, Aaron Gordon, if he's active at 66, any interest in that one? Mm, probably not. There's the occasional ceiling games, but like it is just a thin position. We talked yeah. about it. It's, it's it's like, I feel like I would even, I don't know if Ben Simmons is on a limit, but like if there was, there, if they came out and said no limit for Ben Simmons, what would you think? They were like, no limit. He could play as many minutes as. It's like the same Aaron Gordon. I think I'd just play like Larry Nance. <laughs> or Hach, yeah. Or Hach, no, I wouldn't even play or play Hachimura. I'd probably just play Larry Nance. Yeah, you can't, I don't think you can play Hachimura. He'll play nine, the yeah, game. He say, only I, plays 19 I, minutes. I was going to say, I clicked on him, and, and they came back, and he's not playing much. So uh, I it's think hot. Larry Nance is probably, or, or well, uh, Aldama play isn't playing. He started, he started for Dylan Brooks, yeah, who's back. Right? He's not going to, he's not going to. I, I, he's been really good though. They should consider. Been, they should consider it. They should give if, it a look. look, you're right. And if that were to be the case, like if Aldama started over Dylan Brooks, if we got that news at what what time is that game? That's uh, eight o'clock. If we got that news, then it's it is value. Um, we also might get news that Gobert's out, and then you can play Nat, uh, Nas Reed, and sure. you're like, oh, okay, that's. I know, I know the Yoka trial trouble is looming, but like, we know what Nas Reed's numbers are without Gobert. Yeah. I, if Aldama's starting, I would consider it because Dylan Brooks is just annoying, right? Like he's a subpar three point shooter. He's a pest. Is he not just like Patrick Beverly with braids, or like <laughs> a taller Patrick Beverly? Yeah. There was, I mean, he, there were moments early in his career where he flashed like he could have been sure. something. But he then John Collins kind of just exploded. And, <laughs> right. you know. and then Desmond right. Bain was just better. So, like, right. he just kept yep. falling down the rotation. So, I agree, um, though. If if there was a if there was a situation where Aldama's in the starting lineup. because in, Otherwise, where, I else? think I'm just playing Larry Nance here. 5100 bucks. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I know what the minutes are, and they're frustrating, but he's very productive. He's very He's just very productive. 20 minutes, I mean, I know blowout against Sacramento, 20 minutes there, 9 rebounds. 24 minutes against the Lakers, 10 and 9, Dallas. I mean, you're looking at the numbers here. Guy hasn't gone for less than 20 fantasy points in the last six games. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I mean, it's, he's going to, and it's, we just know what his, the split is going to be 24 and 24, or yep. 25, 23. Like, he's just splitting center minutes with, with Valanciunas, so. Yep. Um, and then, Again, it's just even when Valentinus out, he didn't get an extra run. So like, it, it well, out. yeah, and that was also again blowout. So I think, you know, he lost out on some production there. Um, Minnesota guys again, you could play him in power forward if uh, Kyle Anderson's out. Um, did, did Kessler Edwards play a lot last night? He played I not mean, a lot. They didn't play. They uh, pretty much played their starters. Because they're saying TJ Warren's a, is a rest candidate for today. For the back to backs, yeah. I would played eleven minutes, so I mean I would it's something say, to watch, right? If they sit some of the veteran guys here. I know mm -hmm. Ben Simmons is expected to return, but I don't know if like Joe Harris sits and or Royce O'Neal sits or something like that, you know, Warren sits. They brought they called him back up from the G League, so he's yep. at least on the bench. 
Yuta Yuta has been playing twenty minutes a night as well. Okay, yeah, so could, could get behind um, maybe a little Yuta. It's just we. It, it's just the unknown of who's playing for Brooklyn tonight. Because if yeah. Finney Smith plays, it doesn't even matter about the other true. Just like any of those true, true. guys. Um, you read anything into Dario Saric? Couple games, double double against Boston. He, yeah, and he's projected to be high owned, and that just speaks to no value, right? That just speaks to the fact that there's no value. Um, I think it didn't hurt Sarge that Tory Craig's been like playing more with Devin Booker out, and now sure. you move Tory Craig back to the bench. Does Tory Craig now absolve all Sarge minutes, or has Sarge just played himself into like a role? Right, yeah. Cameron Johnson is playing what? That's the again another unknown. Like if Cameron Johnson gets to thirty minutes and Booker's playing twenty five, and now Craig is the backup four. Yeah, how many, I guess how that's many minutes true. Sarge play? Right, because that starting Sarge lineup play? is going to be Paul Booker, Bridges, Johnson, Johnson. Aiden. So and yeah. and now that moves Craig to the bench. So like, yeah. what are they doing with Craig and Sarge minutes? We know that between Land- Landell and Biombo, they're playing the backup run. Like, figure out who's the guy, but like backing up Aiton. Good luck. But yeah. like, Sarge is only playing back of four. Yep, I agree with you. Um, all right, let's go to center. You know, we have we have Joker here against Minnesota at 11-6. Uh, two games against them, he's averaging almost 60 fantasy points. We talked about that before. Uh, didn't play, obviously, last game. He had 70, or, or sorry, 69 fantasy points, 31-11-13 in the most recent game that he played against Minnesota. Um, both games against Minnesota have been rather competitive, uh, but he only went for 24-7-9 and nine in that first meeting. Um, again, he's Nikola Jokic here. I'm not going to argue if you want to play him. Right. Um, but, I mean, Anthony Davis is... He, yep. He's back to being Anthony Davis here, so... Not projected to be rostered at all. Yeah. And I think I think that's probably due to, like... People think LeBron's going to do LeBron things. Yeah, and... Um, it looks like people are playing Jokic, which, again, I don't understand. But... I don't understand because that means you're playing guys like Dario Sarge in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, or yeah, you're definitely. I mean, if we were to put Jokic, yeah. so as of now, I have Suggs, Ingram, Hunter, and Cam Thomas in our lineup with Joker. It's fifty seven hundred a player, so it's not. So it's 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 doable. Um, it's doable. Davis in a really good spot. Uh, not that Jokic isn't. Jokic doesn't need a good spot to be amazing. Yeah. Um, but like I said, like we were. Pre-injury Anthony Davis, we were, like, losing our but, minds. Dude, he was the best form he's ever, like, his best form ever. Right? And, like, even with LeBron James back, he was still giving you, like, 70 fantasy points. And then 63 mm-hmm. and 58, the last two. Like, I'm I'm in. You know, I guess yep. the question is, like, do the Thunder on a back-to-back, can they can they run with the Lakers here the way that, you know, the talent is? They're, they're good against the spread. They're really I good know. against the spread. They are. You just on they, on paper they suck, right? I'm, like they have two good guys and everybody else yeah. can, is kind of terrible. You know. So, I mean, they actually they're actually half a game up in the loss column versus the Lakers. Well, I mean, that's what against, I'm saying. I don't I don't know how. <laughs> is it just being willed by Gildas Alexander and yeah. Giddy here? Like, yeah. Um, I mean, like they have like it's just they have like decent rotational pieces that like. The head coach just doesn't know how to use. Like they, Jalen, they we Dort like Jalen Williams. Yeah. yeah, they need Dort. That's true. They need Dort back. Um, but um, anyways, Anthony Davis at at ten five, very much um, going to be in play here. And if you think yep. he's going to be low rostered, and or Randall's going to be low rostered, they could be pivot spots here. Jokic, Jokic is the highest projected, and this is we're recording at what time? So it almost one o'clock. Subject, right subject, subject to change, obviously, depending on like news. Um, but Jokic projected to be the third highest player of the slate, and Anthony Davis, for context, not even ten percent. Yeah. I mean, good pivot, dude. If, if, AD, if AD goes for seventy or sixty-five tonight, and Jokic only goes for seventy or sixty-five, yeah, it's a win. 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 Um, you know, even though it ha- it's not really hindering our roster building quite yet, but I mean, we're gonna just play Andre Drummond anyway. So, so Vuk is nine K, uh, eight and eighty-one. Claxton seventy-seven. Um, clocks in 35 f- minutes last night, 46 fantasy points. Guy so, yeah, just so eats, uh, so. right now. Um, you know, eight, not a great defender. Um, eight and himself coming off a monster game against Detroit, but Booker being back could have some mild impact there. 
Um, but he's, I mean, he's looking like a guy that was a number one pick. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. Where do you go after here? Like, where, where are we? As we move down the list, is there any mid tier or value centers that are, are off the page to you? I mean, I don't hate Gobert. 6,800. Um, he's been really good offensively, specifically. He got in foul trouble and got hurt in that Denver game. No, he didn't get hurt. Blo- uh, foul trouble and then the blowout. Mm-hmm. 18 minutes. Uh, I know there was no Jokic, but uh, the offense has been up. We still are wondering. Um, Walker, Kessler, Walker Kessler just took his uh, job in Utah and his block capital as well. <laughs> like He can't block shots. I don't hate Gobert. I don't hate Capella. Um just kind of a low floor or like a safe floor. I don't hate Wendell Carter either. Um, what do you think I about think Xavier of, Tillman here? Yeah, and I think Xavier Tillman is going to be probably the – whoever starts for, for Memphis at center is – You had to pick one, Hartenstein or Xavier Tillman tonight? Probably Tillman. Um, I don't like the fact that he – yeah, I don't love the one shot. Um, I do, obviously, I think it's hard not to love the minutes lately. And the rebounds, um, he, four straight. Yeah, and the, and the rebounds. Like, he fouls out of that game against Philly. No surprise, considering who was on the other side of the, the floor. Um, but I do like the rebounds. I do like the minutes. Don't like the one shot. I think that's kind of an anomaly. Uh, not that he's, like, a high-volume guy, but he is someone who is good in pick and roll and is active on the offensive glass. I would – I would lean Tillman. I like Hartenstein. Um, I would play Valanciunas in a tournament. I would play Wendell Carter in a tournament. If Brandon Clark started, obviously, I think that's a, a good pivot. Um, what do you think of... So, Mo Wagner is going to be the backup center. I don't know. We could go there, I guess. If there, if uh, Bamba is suspended for four games... Sure. And only, then, four, only 4K, though. And then let me ask. So uh, the, Drummond, the Drummond thing is directly correlated to Caruso, I think. Why? Um, because that forces other guys into the rotation. Um, they're also playing, like, they were using Derek Jones as the backup center. Yeah. Um, and now they're using Derek Jones in a spot where, like, he's playing forward because there's no Caruso the last two games. So now Drummond's getting the backup. Derek Jones was the backup center. Officially no Dinwiddie or DFS tonight. Okay, so Cam Johnson, or I did it too. Cam Thomas, 95% owned. Yeah. I'm upping it. And now we're playing Edmund Sumner. Yeah. $4,100. Like, it's just, um, that officially opened up the Brooklyn value. You don't rule that. We're getting all the information right now. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, here, here here's, our live, here's our live. You ruled out no Dinwiddie, no DFS. I bet TJ Warren is about to be ruled out. I'm telling you, Kessler Edwards is probably going to be in the starting lineup tonight at 3K. He might be. He <laughs> You're going to be, be playing four Brooklyn Nets here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's only it's only a matter of time for all this information to start coming out right now. So, um, which is again, it's going to be interesting roster builds here. Um, you know, you can. You might be able to get Randall and Davis. Ben, Sum, uh, ben Simmons guy. officially available. I'm looking at um, a Nets beat writer who's okay. reporting all of it. There's only they only reported Yuta, Dinwiddie, Finney Smith, Seth Curry, and KD. Those are the um, okay. reported outs. So Yuta was getting 20 minutes, like you said. Does that is that the Ben Simmons minutes? Is that like could be? Yeah, it could be. It just we don't know. There's no word on Simmons' role, right? Um, but if we do get word that he's not limited, I, I think the only way we could play Ben Simmons is if they told us he was not limited. Sure. Right, because if they don't come out and say anything, stay away. It's a it's such a stay away spot, and he might just play eighteen minutes and go off the bench. I, don't know. I got a pretty gross lineup here. Okay, so you definitely use Sumner. You probably use Kessler Edwards because you talked about him, and then you probably like plugged in Jokic. So I didn't. I didn't use Kessler Edwards, but I obviously could. No, let's let's not. Let's okay. <laughs> just like if he's starting, it's obviously a different conversation. But I don't know. Like Simmons coming back, like, it just feels yeah. a little. So gross. this is this is the lineup that I got. 
and you let me know what, what you think about it. Obviously, <laughs> there's some moving parts potentially <laughs> still in play, but obviously, <laughs> uh, point guard we have Jalen Suggs, shooting guard we have Brandon Ingram, small forward we have DeAndre Hunter. We're all we're all in uh, on those yep. three. Yep. At power forward we have Julius Randle. Okay. At center we have Anthony Davis. Okay. At guard we have Cam Thomas. At forward, and this is where we can go different directions. Uh, I have Torian Prince at thirty five hundred dollars, and then I mean, at, at Util, I have Edmund Sumner at forty one hundred dollars. I have six hundred dollars left over. I mean, I'm not against the Prince play. We just I we don't he's that, gonna we, don't we do just that. don't know because we don't know what the status of slow. Correct. Like um, if slow mo's out. 100% down. Like, Joe Harris for, for, played 28 minutes last night, had 20 fantasy points. I'd rather play Sumner if that's... Are you, well, are you, is this your forward? We're playing Sumner anyways. Forward. I'm talking about the forward spot, yeah. So, 4100 for the forward spot? For, $4,100 forward. I mean, Jericho Sims is... <laughs> Nothing feels great. You know, like... <laughs> Nothing feels very good here. No. Nope. Uh, except Torian Prince, if Torian Prince... Right? But like I said, like, Joe Harris is at least getting the minutes. Danny so Green I... played 20 minutes... The other 19 minutes. I feel like the last back to back we saw Joe Harris. He <laughs> plus. So the last two back to backs we saw Joe Harris play, he played limited minutes on the second leg. Yeah. Oh, the Jock Vaughn does that. And Jock, you're right. And Jock Vaughn does that. Like he just doesn't care. He'll play Drew Smith tonight. What do we make of him. Troy Brown playing 31 minutes against the Pelicans? I don't think we can get there. Austin Reeves coming back too. True. True, true. I just I think it's going to be a muddy situation. Okay. Um, look, I think there are obvious. This lineup is very good, dependent on RJ Barrett news, dependent on Kyle Anderson news. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we if RJ Barrett's in, maybe we, we pivot down from Randall to like Jaron Jackson or something like that and, and save some cash and, and move yeah, up. Yeah, Jackson. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking Jackson Ben Carroll range. That's exactly what I was thinking mm-hmm. too. Yep. I, I listen, I agree. I agree with you. Um, you know, I'm just thinking if if he gets ruled out though, there's some nice upside potential. Double stacking Randall and Davis there. Yep. Yep. Um, agreed. So yeah, yeah I so think that's that's, great. that's what I'm rolling with now. Again, pivots pivots to be had if, if necessary. Um, I believe Ray Coon is on the playbook here today. Um and well, James and I, of course, are always in the Discord right up to Ross Lock. You guys weren't though. Where were you last night? Uh, <laughs> James and I were in there uh, giving you all the updates. Uh, we'll be around if you need us, and we will be back for Wednesday. Good luck. We'll catch you guys later.